Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is interaction force pairs. And in this video, we wish to learn how do you identify the interaction force pairs that are described by Newton's Third Law. Let's get started. Newton's Third Law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The law defines a force as an interaction that occurs between two objects. These forces act on both objects mutually and simultaneously. We often say that forces come in pairs. We often say that forces come in pairs. That is to say, there's always two of them. They're equal in magnitude and they're opposite in direction. Newton's third law defines the nature of a force. A force is a push or pull that acts between two objects whenever they contact one another, either push against or press against each other's surfaces. In other words, uh, any contact between two forces results in a pair of forces known as an interaction force pair. There's a force on each object that's interacting with one another. The goal of this lesson is to learn how to, how to identify and describe these two forces. For instance, if we have a person that stands up on the floor, you want to be able to identify the two forces between the person and the floor. So first you have to identify the two objects, person and floor, and then you describe the forces. And as you do, use an adjective to describe the direction of those two forces. For instance here, we would say that the person pushes down up on the floor and the floor pushes up on the person. This is the first of several examples in which we will identify the interaction force pairs between two contacting objects. The procedure involves first identify the two objects that are contacting each other and then describe the push or pull that acts on each of the objects independently. And when you do, use an adjective to describe the direction. So in our first example, we have a book that's at rest up on a desk. The objects are book and desk. And so the interaction force pair would look something like this. The book pushes down up on the desk, and the desk pushes up on the book. In describing this force pair, you'll notice that I've identified the two forces, the two objects that are interacting, the book and the desk, and I've included a direction to describe the direction of the force up on the desk. So the book pushes down on the desk. Now once I've done that, I can find the other force in the pair by just taking the two nouns and switching them around in the, in the sentence. And you notice how I've done that. The desk pushes up on the book. You also notice that the adjective has become oppositely directed. In other words, it was down up on the desk, but it's up up on the book. In example two, a swimmer freestyles through the water. There's two objects involved here, swimmer and water. And if you think about how a swimmer swims through the water, it reaches out its arm and its hand and it grabs some water and it pushes that water backwards. So when we describe the interaction force pair, we're going to say the swimmer pushes backwards on the water and the water pushes forwards on the swimmer. You'll notice in this pair, I have identified the two objects, swimmer and water, and you'll notice also I've included an adjective that describes the direction. The swimmer pushes the water backwards. And in describing the other force in the pair, I've simply taken these two nouns and switched them around in the sentence. And so now the water pushes forward on the swimmer. In our third example, we're going to talk about the walk. You probably never thought much about walking, but when you walk, what you do is you stretch your right foot ahead of your body and plant it on the floor. Then you take your left foot and you push off of the floor. In fact, you push the floor backwards. And so when we describe the interaction force pair for a woman walking across the office floor, we'll identify the two objects as the woman and the floor. And then we'll say the woman pushes backwards on the floor and the pl floor pushes forward on the woman. You'll notice in this interaction force pair, I have my two objects, woman and floor, and I also have a directional adjective. And in describing the other force in the pair, I've simply switched the nouns around in the sentence and the backward has become forward. In example four, we're going to get the idea of flight right. You probably never thought much about how a bird flies, but of course, it has something to do with those wings and the flapping of those wings. And as the bird flaps the wings, it pushes air downwards. And the result of pushing the air downwards is the air simultaneously pushes the bird upwards. So the two objects in the force pair are the bird and the air. And the bird is pushing the air downwards 
and the air is pushing the bird upwards. If you've ever been to a Civil War reenactment, you've probably seen a cannon fire. Now, of course, there's no cannonball in the cannon during the reenactment, but you can imagine that if there were, what would be happening is that the cannon would be pushing upon the cannonball to propel it forward. So the two objects involved are the cannon and the cannonball, and the cannon pushes the cannonball forward, and the cannonball pushes the cannon backwards. And if you've ever seen this occur, this causes the cannon to actually recoil backwards when it is fired. So there's two forces in the pair, one forward up on the cannonball and the other backwards up on the cannon. Now that we have some confidence, we're going to describe some more complex interaction force pairs. For example here, we have a bucket that's whirled in a circle using a rope held by a hand. So what that makes this more complex is there's three objects involved. And when there are, you have to be very, very careful that you don't that you identify what objects interacting with what object. For example, the hand is holding the rope, but it's not interacting with the bucket. So you wouldn't describe any interaction between the hand and the bucket because they're not touching one another. But the rope's touching the bucket. So you can describe the interaction between the rope and the bucket. You can say that the rope pulls the bucket rightward and upward, and as a result, the bucket pulls the rope leftward and downward. So these are the two forces that interact between the rope and the bucket. Now you have to describe the interactions between the hand and the rope because they're touching or interacting with one another. So you would say that the hand pulls the rope rightward and upward, and the rope pulls the hand leftward and downward. So those are the two interaction force pairs between the rope and the hand. In all, there are two interaction force pairs for the three objects that are involved. This is our second example of a complex interaction, and it's complex because there are several objects here. There's the ground, a tractor, a couple of ropes, a person, and an elephant, and that's a lot of interaction. So I'm going to begin over on the left side of the diagram and identify that there's some tractor, wheel, tractor tire, tires and ground interacting. I could describe the force pair. If the wheels are trying to move, it's probably something like the tractor tires are pushing backwards on the ground and the ground forward on the tractor. And then if we look, it will notice the tractor and the rope are interacting. So there's a pair of forces there between tractor and rope. And then we get to the person holding on to ropes with both hands. And so there's a pair of forces uh, 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 described there, uh, actually two interaction force pairs with the left hand and the right hand. And then finally we look at the rope and the elephant. There's an interaction force pair, a force on the elephant and a force on the rope. And finally it's the elephant's feet and the ground are interacting. And so a whole host of interaction force pairs are given in this complex situation. To finish up, I'd like to describe a few final examples. So here we see three pictures of three different interactions. In the first one, a bullet, bullet is being fired by a rifle. And the rifle pushes the bullet forward, and the bullet pushes the rifle backwards. In the middle example, we have a bug hitting a bus. And so the bus pushes the bug rightward, and the, and the bug pushes the bus leftward. And finally, we have a ball being caught by a catcher's mitt, and the catcher's mitt is pushing the ball leftward, and the mitt pushes the ball rightward. Now. At this time in every video, I'd like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps to help solidify the learning. But before I help you out with the action plan, I was wondering if you could help us out. Could you give us a like or even a subscribe if you enjoyed the video? And if you have a question or comment, leave it down below in the description section. Now, finally, here's the action plan. At our website, we have, a ser we have a section called the Concept Builders, and there's a Newton's Third Law Concept Builder. Be a great way to follow up on this video. And we have a series of apps known as the Minds on Physics apps. There are a series of questioning modules that deliver a question, and give immediate feedback. In app number one, we have a module called Newton's Laws, and it's Mission in L12. That would be the perfect follow up to this video. Finally, we have a tutorial on our website. If you ever need a quick reference, always consult the tutorial. We have a lesson four in the Newton's Laws chapter that pertains to this particular topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck.